that is something that I, I want everyone who's listening to this to come to terms with. You have to be the center of your own universe. The people you love, the people in your community, they orbit you. We're all orbiting one another while being the center of our own universe. Welcome to the Relationship Rundown. I'm your host, Rochelle, and I am a dating and relationship coach. Each week, we'll be diving into the dating world and get real about how you can find the right love for you. I'm here to help you put the you back in dating. So let's dive in. Hey, friend. Today, we are going to talk about something that often gets confused, two things that often get confused, especially if you are a high achieving woman, you've gone far in your career, you've gone far in different aspects of your life. And when it comes to this, someone might tell you you're too picky or tell you you're wanting too much or doing too much. And that is having unrealistic expectations versus having high standards. And we will be exploring what unrealistic expectations actually look like versus maintaining, you know, healthy standards, because you need to maintain healthy standards and high standards based off of what is in alignment with you if you want to actually have a healthy partnership with someone else. So we're going to discuss, because it's hard to know the difference between if you, you know, find someone who actually aligns with you and what you want to do out of life versus you are pushing people away. Because spoiler alert, I used to be very emotionally unavailable and I am someone who had an avoidant attachment style versus an, uh, I actually had a disorganized attachment style, I should say, because sometimes I oscillated to (laughs) anxious. But my whole point is I used to have really unrealistic expectations because of my emotional unavailability and I didn't want to connect with people. It was my way of like protecting myself. Sometimes expectations can be walls that you put in between yourself and other people. So That's what we're going to dive into today. So if you are interested in hearing more, stay tuned. Let's start by looking at how we have been conditioned to even look at relationships, romantic relationships specifically. I think I am not the only one who can sit here and say that they were raised on rom-coms as hopeless romantics and had fairy tales in their head, like really thinking that you know, the Prince Charming will write in and rescue me from the issues I had, especially because, you know, I dealt with a lot of stuff as a, as a child. And like, I w- remember dreaming about the white knight writing in and saving me as a damsel of, in distress because I was hyper independent as a child and I, I felt like I had to do a lot of things on my own. So it was hard to not fantasize about what it is if someone came in and took off some of that load off of me. And it took me a while to realize that there is no fantasy husband that will come and fix my life or rescue me from the issues I've been through or, you know, like be perfect, essentially make everything better, make make me feel okay and will always be there and never fail. But at the end of the day, it took me a while to realize that that was un- unrealistic and unreasonable expectations to have for anybody, you know? And a question I asked myself and I would ask you to ask yourself is, are you looking to get what you didn't get from your parents through your partner? Is that what you're searching for in your relationships? Because if that is the standpoint you're coming from, even subconsciously, the expectations are always going to be realistic. Because that person is your peer, is your partner. It's not the person who was supposed to provide fundamental emotional support for you. And you cannot expect that person to come in and fill in the gap. That gap, mother wounds and father wounds can truly only be filled in by ourselves, regardless of being relational beings. If you go listen to my last podcast, I talk about how we're relational beings. And Though we are relational beings, we still have to relate to ourselves. I think sometimes when we think about the fact that we connect with other people, we get we forget that we have to build and cultivate a relationship with ourselves. I had a client who went out on a date. Oh my gosh, they hit it off. It was amazing. They had they talked for hours after. They were having four hour phone calls every single day. And then one day we talked and she said, you know, like he's just so perfect. I can't even believe like he he just meets 
everything and more. Like, I can't believe it. The only thing that I, gave me pause, though, is he's like, when I marry you, whatever work you're doing, you're going to stop and you're going to be at home with the kids. You're not going to work. You're going to be at home with the kids and you're going to have to maintain a certain weight, of course, because, you know, like that's what I mean, shouldn't gain more than a few pounds, anything like that. And just having certain stipulations. And I immediately picked that up with, that's the number one sign to show you that he is hoping to enter in not a reciprocal partnership, but a transactional relationship. You are going to have to show up every single day in this box he fit you in and meet expectations that will always be unrealistic. Normally, when men dictate and try and control to that degree on that level, when they break out their vision on that level, it is a form of control. Control all the variables. And at the end of the day, you're not a variable. You're a person. You're a human being. And this is a partnership. Both partners should have high standards. And please don't confuse your needs with your expectations because those are absolutely two different things. And if you want someone to read your mind or fit into a mold you created for them, it's never going to work out. By setting high standards, healthy high standards, you're giving both yourself and your partner the space to grow and evolve together. Because at the end of the day, and I know I keep saying that, <laughs> at the end of the day, we want to uh, constantly be growing and evolving into the best version of ourselves. And we cannot do that without someone who is pushing us and rooting for us and encouraging us as a partner. But people automatically assume that it has to be peaches and cream all the time. Friction and struggle is a part of the human condition and experience. And that is through those moments that you learn the most. It's through the hardships in your relationship that you guys overcome together that you learn the most. And the only way to maintain a relationship that stays a true partnership is to set those healthy standards, is to give your partner the space to meet those standards and grow. If they don't meet your standard once, you communicate that and you communicate clearly and, and from a place of encouragement and curiosity. Because that's how you break down each other's walls is through curiosity and understanding. But holding strong boundaries and standards for how someone has to show up in your life. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you have realistic expectations for yourself and healthy standards for yourself, you will be able to kind of translate that. But one of the easiest ways for me to see unrealistic expectations translate into relationships, it's when the person has very unrealistic expectations for themselves. You will do so much better if you focus on defining your standards for yourself and your expectations for yourself and how you want to show up in the world and in a relationship and understanding what you need in a potential partner to show up as your best self rather than defining, you know, what that partner should be like or should do or not do or any of that stuff. The only way you will be able to truly connect with someone is to allow that person to fully be themselves and to also fully be yourself. Don't show up based off of unrealistic expectations of how a girlfriend or a wife or any of that should be. Show up as you are because you want someone to love you as you are. So at the end of the day, if you want someone who's kind and honest and respectful and has their money together and they're curious and all of those types of stuff, you have to show up that way too. We are, as human beings, collectively, we are mirrors of one another. The way you attract someone who has similar values and standards is to have those, va those values and standards. And it is mind boggling how much you will see someone be a do as I say, not as I do type person and do not live by those standards, but they expect everyone else to. You should focus on not defining other standards of how, like how other people should live. It's more about how you could live out your standards and seeing someone show up on your level. Expectations are often about control and perfection. And we come from a place internally where we feel like we lack that. 
and we want perfection because if things, if you have control and things are perfect, then you can be okay. It comes from a place of coping. It comes from a place of dysregulation. It makes sense. But standards are about mutual respect, shared values, those types of things that matter in a relationship because you want you and your partner both to thrive. What you want is a relationship where both you and your partner can thrive and grow. And that comes from having standards where you respect yourself. Because at the end of the day, having high standards is also a reflection of how you respect yourself, how you, how you see yourself. So if you are lowering your standards, you are basically saying you do not believe you can have or meet anyone who can meet those high standards. So you should just take what you can get. And if that's what you're doing, please ask yourself why you are enough. Why are you doing that? You don't have to do that, I promise. I'm going to be diving into some examples when we get back. If you're tired of spinning your wheels on these dating apps and you want a real game plan for finding the love you've always wanted, I got you. For a limited time, you can get a personalized dating audit from yours truly, your resident dating and relationship coach. This is your chance to have someone get their eyes on your dating experiences so they can tell you exactly what's not working for you and give you a very clear roadmap on how you can find the right partner for you. If you're interested, you can get your dating audit at Kochima.com backslash audit. That is Kochima.com backslash audit. And you can also find the link in the show notes. Now let's get back to the show. Here are some unrealistic expectations. I expect him to be able to sense how I'm feeling. He should be able to pick up off of my face that this is something, that there's something wrong with me. If I say I'm fine, he's supposed to, you know, dig deeper and want to know more instead of just taking me at face value and hearing what I'm saying. That is an unrealistic expectation. Any type of mind reading whatsoever is always going to be unrealistic because as adults, you're, you're grown. If you're a big girl, you're going to have to use your words if you want something. Now, high standards are, I expect my partner to treat me with respect inside the house and outside the house. That is a high standard because that is something that can be talked about, communicated, and you say, this is my standard, you are disrespecting me. When that standard isn't met, you communicate, you're disrespecting me and I do not appreciate that. The standard I have for you, the standard I have for those who I'm with is to treat me with respect. There's nothing wrong with that. That makes sense. It, high standards is a focus on you. It is a focus on what makes you show up best. It is how people get in alignment with you and how people understand how to operate with you. For instance, like it's unrealistic to think that you're going to get everything on the first try. You know, trial it. I saw a TikTok video. It was like trial and error. You know, I, I when I heard trial and error, I didn't think I need, like I was going to have to deal with the error part. And it's so true. It's like, it's unrealistic to think you're going to get it right the first time, every time. But high standards is saying, I am going to consistently put forth my best effort until I get this at a certain level. That is having high standards. And the reason why I actually want to bring this up is because I really feel like the women I work with, the high performing women, the high achieving women, I highly, I rarely ever see them approach their relationships with unrealistic expectations for their partner. They usually have unrealistic expectations for themselves and how they're going to show up. They expect themselves to always know what their partner, exactly what their partner wants. They expect themselves to always prioritize their partner above everything else. And they feel bad when they cannot show up as the perfect partner, the perfect parent, the perfect friend, the perfect coworker, the perfect employee. And that is why I really, really want to talk about unrealistic expectations versus high standards, because especially when it comes to relationships, because you have to assess yourself and look at yourself 
when you're thinking about these expectations. Because, for instance, no partner should always prioritize you over anything, everything else, and you shouldn't be doing that either. And wanting your partner to have a specific career, appearance, or lifestyle is a preference. But if you're, you're, you're hogtying yourself so that I'm telling you right now, girl, you are making the biggest mistake because you'll be so shocked who ends up coming your way and getting you just smitten, okay? It's important to know I need someone who's a good communicator because I need to communicate shorthand and being will- I'm someone who I like to talk. I, have, I need someone who's willing to listen, not discount me, and understand what I need and be a good communicator and be able to talk. I love to have conversations. And that's my high standard. If you are, if you're texting me WIA every day, I'm blocking you. Like I understand where my standards are and standards are there to help you understand how you can match up with someone who aligns with you and maintain a partnership that works best for the both of you. Now, another reason why I wanted to talk about this is because high performing women are always in a, you know, in a catch 22, right? They're conflicted between what they want or what society tells them is too much. Like, are you being picky? Are you being picky? And I'm going to actually bring up a a comment that was left on my last podcast episode. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because it was a long, it was a long message. And it was just like, my guy, it made me want to jump to do this episode as soon as possible. So I'm going to read where is this? Let me see. Just lower your standards and do it with someone willing Because there are something like eight times as many men as women on there. Plenty of fish show their data and women are flooding the same 10% of men. I couldn't find that anywhere. I don't know where he got that from. The app isn't forcing them to do that. Men that, and listen, I'm always say what I want to say. And if you're a hit dog and you're hollering back at me, that just means that I triggered you because you see something in yourself that resonated with that thing you didn't like. Don't put that on me, okay? With that being said, one, just lower your standards is bullshit. Never do that. That's why I put up that episode about dating apps. If you're putting all your eggs in one basket and you have all these lofty expectations from a dating app, you're doing yourself a disservice. But never lower your standards. And if you read between the lines of that comment, you could see it's the same... It's the same woe is me lamenting that men do when they feel like, oh, women only want the 10% of men in the world and they don't want the 90%. They wonder why things aren't working because they're not paying attention to us, the 90%. Girl, like, (laughs) don't even get me started. At the end of the day, those men want you to lower your standards because they know even if, say, like plenty of fish, those 10% of men, those are the 10% of men that are probably actively engaged in showing up and doing the things that they need to do. And that's what's attracting the women. Who knows? I have not been on plenty of fish. But at the end of the day, there are these men who want you to lower your standards because they're like, oh, guess what? You're not going to always get the best man. No. It is now high time for men to evolve. And meet the standards. Like I said, if you need to understand the difference between the two, you cannot correlate unrealistic expectations with high standards. They're not the same. And what men want is for you to drop your standards. Don't do that. Because at the end of the day, those men will make your life miserable. Those are the ones who will sit there and want you to coddle them. Those are there who are looking to get what their parents gave them and what their parents didn't. They're looking for a second mommy. So anyone who tells you to lower your standards, run far, far away. No one will ever know exactly what you want. Even when you were a baby in this world, whoever was your primary caregiver did not know exactly what you wanted, okay? (laughs) So that's impossible because you are one of one. You are so freaking unique that no one knows or always knows exactly what you want but you. But a high standard would be like, my partner should be a good communicator and be willing to listen and understand my needs. You imagine lowering that. 
imagine saying, oh, he's not the best communicator. So let me lower my standards a little bit. And every single day you struggle to communicate and he never listens to you and he doesn't understand what you need and refuses to listen to understand what you need. One expectation that I see that I think is pretty problematic, but is has been normalized is my partner should always prioritize me above everything else. It's like, I want to be the center of the universe for my partner and I can't be for, with this person because they have kids or I want to be the center of my universe, but like his job is so important to him. That sounds crazy. And I need you to sit back and understand how insane that sounds. Your partner should, you should be the center of your partner's universe. Your partner is the center of your partner's universe. And, and that is something that I, I want everyone who's listening to this to come to terms with. You have to be the center of your own universe. The people you love, the people in your community, they orbit you. We're all orbiting one another while being the center of our own universe. So many people, unfortunately, so many women, high-performing women, like to orbit themselves around their own lives and have someone else be the center of it. And you can't live like that. It's, you're completely out of balance and it does not work out. So if you have this standard for anyone, or it's not a standard, it's an unrealistic expectation. If you have this for anyone, Please take, take a step back and ask why that is. And again, you might want to go back to the question of, are you looking to get what you didn't from your parents through your partner? Because that's not fair. A high standard would be, my partner should be able to balance their own needs with the needs of our relationship. That is it right there. How can you align to make sure you guys both balance your own needs with the needs of the relationship? And I have a perfect partnership diagram that I will be posting on my Instagram sometime this week to break down what it actually looks like. Because we all know to become one, all of that stuff, a lot of toxicity has been wrapped up in that. So I'm going to take the time to like break down how that looks and where the alignment comes. So look out for that. And my Instagram is at relationship underscore Kochima. And that will be in the show notes. But yeah, so like also my partner should share all my hobbies and interests. That's when I see a lot. That's one that comes up, which is that's very unrealistic. You guys will share interests. But the greatest thing I think is learning new interests and new hobbies and new things through my partner that I wouldn't have thought of before. And also not liking some of those things that he, that he does and like me being able to, you know, be like, you do your thing over there. <laughs> And I'll do my thing over here and works well. A high standard would be my partner should respect and support my interests and be willing to find some that we share. Yeah, you guys have to find shared interests and work together for those shared interests. But if he's sitting there laughing at the fact that you love Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon or being like, you don't really like anime or is like disrespecting your interests, that is a standard not being met. So today... We talked about unrealistic expectations versus high standards. I really hope that you guys were able to pick out some clips, some gems. Like I said, if anyone ever tells you your standards are too high, standards are about respect, about growth and evolution, and finding someone who values the same things that you do and values you for who you are, okay? Expectations might be about control, but standards are about your worth, okay? Expectations about maintaining control but standards are about worth and value. And that is how you get your partnership to grow and evolve because you guys are aligned. So thanks for hanging out with me today on the Relationship Rundown. I really am so excited to be back and get more episodes up. So if today's episode got you thinking, please share it with a friend who might be trying to figure out this whole dating thing between unrealistic expectations and should she lower her standards? Is she too picky? If you have anyone that you want to share it with, please do. And do not forget to subscribe so you do not miss what's coming next. I can't wait. Next week, we'll be talking about being a placeholder in your relationship. That means keeping that side of the bed warm for your man while he sits and waits to find his real true love. That hurts. And I cannot wait to sit down and talk about that because I've been seeing this come up a lot. And a lot of that comes from lowering your standards. So it's all connected. Cannot wait to hang out with you guys again next week.
And if you like today's episode, please leave a review because it really helps other people find the show and like join this conversation because we're all about putting the you back in dating and helping all of us find the real true love we're looking for. See you guys next week. 